Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Royal Rumble campaign where I'm trying to survive as long as possible in a heavily modded Legendary Iron Man campaign. Um, with mainly double enemy squad size, um, yellow alert and about 100 different mods just to round up the composition. It is quite hard to say the least and we're now in month number 12. It is pretty far into the campaign and we're still alive. That's the good news. The bad news is we haven't uh, kicked out all of the factions that we want. <clears throat> and one reason why that is, is because there's just so much to do uh, with all of the mods installed. Today is going to be Operation Spider Claw, where we're um, fighting against the second alien ruler. We don't know which one it is. Uh, you can still leave your comments down below and uh, make a bet right now. But whoever it is, we will need to fight them now. The first alien ruler, the Viper King, has already been extinguished, although he finally fled and never came back. So I call that a victory of a coward, or over, over a coward rather. And we're now hopefully going to trigger the second one and with it in the upcoming missions. After that, uh, we will revisit the rulers just as a refresher in case uh, that is no longer on your radar. Rulers within this campaign will always regenerate to 100%, including all of the armor. So if we see any chance that this guy is going to go down, we are going to take it. And for that, I will bring frost grenades with me, two to be precise, so that Euler theoretically can freeze that bastard. We're unloading, and uh, the idea would be that with uh, Shadow's Banishment and a couple of other dual shots, uh, Sonar maybe with um, Rapid Shot, that we're actually trying to chew, uh, chew through the entire health pool. We got one extra turret. We got one Mimic Beacon, the only Mimic Beacon that we possess. We got some uh, blue screen rounds. We got a nice little uh, recon unit with uh, Shadow. And other than that, this is really our prime team. So this is going to be a very difficult mission, but I am fully confident that we will be successful in the wilderness of uh, South America. Join me and wish me luck as we are now going into the mission. Good, so we landed and we got a nice little 20 plus enemies ahead of us. We are in concealment and we got the best scout in the Western Hemisphere. Shadow is moving in. And they are not having any of it. Uh, let's block the stairs. That way no one is accidentally running into us. But we got a lot of bio enemies here. Bio faceless one, bio viper. I like the bio enemies. I mentioned that beforehand. Uh, so far, one of the better parts of the mods. Not necessarily that all of the other enemies are bad or uh, more something like that. But I mentioned in terms of game design, I really appreciate it when the game designer thinks about a distinct feature and a set of strength uh, that an enemy has, but also a exploitable weakness or disadvantages. And whether or not you need to find that out over time or whether uh, it becomes clear right away, I don't know. Okay, well, that uh, is a distinguishable uh, set of features for us as well. We just lost our concealment. Anyways, back to the game design logic. I personally appreciate if uh, the enemies have a distinguishable sets of strengths and weaknesses and uh, the weaknesses require you to deviate from your standard strategy. If the enemy is just having more hit points and an unfair amount of uh, stat-wise bonuses, for instance, that are just stacking up to be stronger than a normal enemy and you simply need to deal more damage or do more, then that is not necessarily game difficulty. Game difficulty is when they do have a variety of uh, cleverly designed uh, features and you need to circumvent that, understand how to avoid it and basically find counterplay. I'm a big fan of that idea of uh, having counterplay 
and knowing how to counter a certain situation super important in strategy games in general so if you if you take that principle of uh, just game design and an enemy uh, design i think that the bio um, bio troops did that reasonably well you are disincentivized to go anywhere close to them because they leave uh, that trail of acid and on top of it when when they die for instance the bio viper they explode and basically spill over even more of the acid on the other hand there are clear options like the hazmat vest or in our case the bio vests which are preventing you from uh, from even taking acid damage so that is one counterplay mechanic and the other one is they are not really very uh, ex extensively stronger than uh, than others am i just seeing that we fight against a viper princess okay well the, i just talked about the viper king and uh, this here is uh the oh what are they called children of the ice children of the ice i think mod pack which basically once you have killed the viper king uh edits three or four viper prince and princesses into the game some of which you have just witnessed okay we can't charge forward okay so this here will trigger which means really what we need to do is move up here to get a bit closer it's a bit of a shame for hogbite but i'd rather play it safe than being sorry the bio zerker doesn't just come by themselves so edgar could do a little bit of a kill zone thing over here and could we get even further up i think this is good we can then always go a bit higher with uh, dilly g and with serial we should be seriously capable of hitting everything turret moves a bit further overwatches sonar overwatches and we're good to go really Bioserka is likely going to move and does not trigger a kill zone. Bummer. Okay, so far this all looks very much manageable so i can't speak about the vipers but 70 hit points but very low damage in only three uh, two armor it's already a bit of an exception here clearly hasn't been modded for this kind of run I'm trusting you here. Daily moves up nice. we can hit these guys over there and it moves up as well Rail moves up. 
turret moves into the middle. Sona moves up. Look for now. Hogbite is standing back, but I can ensure you this is not going to last long until the man will unleash its his fury. Good, nice little kill zone right there. Let's position ourselves up there. Lock the entrance and provide nice vision for everyone. Root, Archbishop, Commando. Well, we're not standing in the way that is um, a starter. We should be fine. Okay, fantastic. Now it should trigger. Dilly G takes the first shot, as always when Dilly G sh uh, shoots, he hits. Bioserker generates armor whenever he's hit, that's an interesting ability. Good lord, what a nice uh, hit. Keep in mind the losses are not auto hit um, headshots. Good, Elite by Viper is overwatching, but we have means of removing that. So not too concerned about it. Those guys are jumping down, fantastic. And I can see they are now back here. Seem to have not heard the shots. And another group is down there. And of course, in true X confession, we triggered another pack. And even Hogbite gets to do his shot. These guys uh, have walked through the asset and are now burning. That's cool. Uh, some extra damage those guys on the other hand will cause a problem if they start running into us for now they are not Okay, so, hmm. First things first, free reload, right? Right. Then next up, let's hit that Bioserker because we're ignoring five armor. Might as well benefit from it. Okay, he's generating armor with every single shot. I do not like that. Oh, 
All right, she's even generating more armor. I see how it is. All right, Dilly, there you have something for your, uh, for your lock to ride in. How could this guy continue to generate armor? Let's kill the Bio Viper first. Euler grazes. And Euler destroys. Euler then dead eyes. Before bio faceless. Oh, that's just such a menace. This guy is... When he gets going, there's just no turning back. I'm careful. The only reason why I'm not using Hogbite at this point to charge in is I don't want to pull that extra pack. Reload with a turret, overwatch. Reload with a shotgun, overwatch. Overwatch directly with hogbite. And we give a free reload over to Euler. With Threat assessment before taking an overwatch ourselves. I will reposition. Oh, really? Oh, really? Well, why not? Well, it sounds like we're hitting everybody downstairs. Yeah, I saw that there was uh, that there were enemies down there because uh, there was kind of a red status symbol last round. So I knew they were downstairs and I just accidentally moved in a position right next to that explosion. Good, they seem to hate the turret already. Good, they are heavily, heavily um, acided, poisoned. And we finally have the attention of the alien ruler. This one, Viper Princess Roster, um, or Sister. What's her name? Viper Princess Sister seems to be easier than the Viper King himself. I don't mind that. At the end, all of them need to die. Nice little hit on the mech. Guards, 
Interestingly enough, all bets are off now. As uh, these guys have uh, fully moved in. Okay, our turret will soon die. But it acted as a really nice distraction. Appreciate that. We're dealing with the bio guys first. And what could be more beneficial than a good old jobble explosion? There we go, shredded. Oh, we also shredded our cover. Mm. Not so good. Mr. Saiken. Cannon gets um, back, luckily. We got some advanced teamwork here. Time to get that guy down. Yeah, I think I want that extra focus. Larium core. Oh, nice. Can certainly use one of those. Go back to our options here. Oiler continues to grind these guys down. I tell you what, we're just rapid firing. I only need to hit one out of two. 50-50, but you can miss those uh, twice great we also have death from above here so might as well do it like this here kill you can't handle me oh god even got a hair trigger out of it well i tell you what uh, this could be a crit Nice, the hair trigger came just at the right time. Should have potentially saved that rupture for the Viper. The bit suboptimal. Okay, don't they have the ruler actions as well? I'm confused. So 
So wait, if I just kill this guy, no retaliation. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Overwatch with Grell. I don't know what's in there, but we should be fine just moving here. I tell you what, I'll just overwatch. Let's see what the outcome will be. To pull back. All right, enemy begins to move forward again. And one of my most beloved enemies. Potentially the single most annoying one, maybe together with the Rift Keeper. The Rift Keeper MK2 was highly annoying as well. I haven't seen all of the enemies yet. Uh, this is the tragic part about so many mods. We haven't seen the Anni Annihilator, Super Duper, Uber. Uh, sectopod. Praetorian sectopods were nasty buggers as well. So, I don't know. There are so many really, really, really nasty enemies. Hard to pick, like, the one. Good, let's soften you guys up for a moment. Perch Commando. Still free reload. Still got that cyborg. Let's get some amplifying done. that uh, cyborg respectively wounding it to then remove it afterwards I want to charge uh, in there we'll let them come
I'm okay with letting Hogbolt stand in the open. He has massive deflection and dodge. If he takes a shot, then so be it. That would be one point of damage. Reload, Overwatch. And Reload, Overwatch. I think we're fine. Good fire line. Let them come. The Exalted Archbishop. Dreaded bane of our existence. <laughs> okay, we do have an Archbishop. He is just standing there for now. Minding his own business. I tell you what. We're going to shred him a little bit. Just getting that armor off right away. Moving over here into safety, somewhat safety. And summoning a ghost that will trigger whatever else is back there, which is fine by me. The ghost can take over the tanking. Some nice little blade storm going right away. Okay, so far, so good. Well, look, we don't want to interfere with this guy. Can we hit individual targets? No, we can't kill anyone. Hence, let's just kill zone to maximize the damage that is uh, that is coming in. I would also add protocol. Onto cannon just in case someone moves a bit closer. Then overwatch ourselves. Third overwatches. And we're just spreading out so that AoE damage is not hitting us as hard. And to be honest, Cannon will also just overwatch. Now, in terms of uh, this here. Are we going to survive more than one round? Likely not. Uh, so amplify onto the Archbishop. 
That'll make future damage a bit more sticky. Triggering an overwatch. Nice little dodging. And we are parrying. Okay, cool. So far, so good. Very nice. The Templar somewhat offers counterplay to the Archbishop. Unfortunately, we forgot our... Unfortunately, we forgot our Mind Shield. I stupidly went for the uh, armor, but I wouldn't need to. He really just needs a Mind Shield. Good, so they all dealt with the Templar. Good, more armor for the Berserker. And Guardian continues to tick. Could have used that shredder a tiny bit earlier. Not much, but just like a tiny bit earlier. Remove panic. Thank you. Time to kill the Bioserker. There we go. Filling up that focus again. Free reload. Good. So, what are we dealing with? This guy needs to die. Then well, well, we need more damage. Good moving up. Just to get a better observation position and might as well explode the thing in here. Maybe we're hitting something. The answer is no. Don't worry, there wasn't anything valuable yet. I will unload on the Viper next turn.
Good. We're just moving out of line of sight to let them come. Boiler. It's quite clear. He can overwatch. There is a chance that we hit him but not kill him. I still think this is valuable because it brings him into leather range. Can't really hit anyone. I think we're decent, uh, decently off with this um, fire, uh, fire line. They will need to move into us. He climbs up just to climb down. That was an interesting movement. Oh, look at you. You never had been a bio trooper. You always had been a bio faceless one. Nice. The sedative turret still survives. Love it. I think we're one on one in that Archb uh, Archbishop soon. Is he regenerating hit points? Why am I just dreaming that up? So, Frost Bomb. I'm not sure if they are immune against it, but it would be nice if they aren't. Okay. Fully immune to it. Let's just break the game again. If anyone is really good at modding and has uh, an understanding, is that a memory overflow? Mods just not working well together? Or are some of the abilities just not working properly with the enemies? I'm, I'm wondering why it happens sometimes just in the middle of an animation. I mean, not much would be uh, happening behind the scenes here from a programming standpoint, but okay, um, I'll just restart and we're, we'll redo the same exact order of turns. Okay, time to replay the exact same turn. I hope I won't forget it this time. So I think we reload it and start getting this guy. And the thought process afterwards was to get the... Oh, we got a hair trigger. That's nice. The thought process afterwards was to get that princess. Go 
This time not 425, but 423. Down to 39 hit points. Shadow reloads and that should finish the princess. One, two, three, four, five. And that's why we bring a reaper when you need to finish one of uh, the um, rulers. Very well done. Good. Sonar moves up. I think they upgrade the stocks, by the way. I never remember them doing five points of damage. Not a bad choice because they sucked. It's just unclear which mod upgraded them. Perfect time for a little reload. Good time to kill the Collector Assassin. There we go. Problem solved. And we're out of shots. Now to you, my friend. Dear Exalted Archbishop. There we go. Disoriented and some decent damage. I like what I'm seeing. Got one trooper back there. I don't give a damn. Hogbite parries. And that will be another attack right there. Because now I know what their critical weakness is. So all they do is elemental damage. And Hogbite is absolutely immune to elemental damage. There is the parry. <laughs> okay, found out their weakness. And your little overwatch will not help you here. Your plasma resistance will not help you either. Amplify. For some good extra damage. And here we go. Nice. Some bonus stunning for good measure. Good. I'm excited because we almost made it out. Let's just double check if there is not another kind of pack back here. Seems clear to me. Scylla Turret is going to be our scout because it's expendable, very expendable. <laughs> oh, brutal hit. Good, nice little bio trooper. Still tries to mingle with Hogbite. But that man has killed more aliens than anyone else. So what does uh, 
What makes you think that you can tangle with Hogbite? Okay, charging up because I think we're done here. Okay. Sell it to turret. Moves up. Overwatches. And sonar also moves up. Overwatches. Yeah. I think we're good. Told you not to fuck with him. Landing the C4. And I think we all learned a valuable lesson today. Biotroopers in the end game. Farm status. We got them good. XCOM 1. Aliens nil. And we're getting out. Fantastic. Almost a flawless mission. Pod control was okay. We pulled them one at a time, but with non-type missions, it's it's easy, specifically with the Reaper. But this could be a good educational video if you are struggling with uh, trying to pull enemy uh, pods. This is even with yellow alert, so sort of more difficult uh, in terms of just pulling one pod. And we uh, threw out one of uh, the next Chosen's, uh, Alien Rulers, sorry. The Child of the Winter, Sister something, uh, Princess Sister, I think that was her name. Let's hope she will give us the same uh, prostitute that the... Uh, that the Viper King would give. It's a bit odd that he just disappeared. We met him way too early in the campaign to really have tools to get rid of him. But vulnerability plus uh, plus uh, shredding him and and then rupturing him. Excuse me, and then rupturing him. Uh, that is a good combination together with banish uh, deals almost like 50 60 points of damage in one go So I think we can get most rulers or we should be able to get most rulers down with that strategy Good so we got uh, princess sisters Corps. Nice little extra autoloader. I like that. Good. Who knows what we would get uh, by researching her. Maybe her corpse also creates an armor. Maybe something else. The one thing with that autoloader that I would love to do is I think it was Haywire's weapon yeah that definitely could benefit from an auto loader because then we can uh, reload just after we did a nice little kill zone good as soon as our uh, team is ready i think we're soon going to do another base uh, mainly because that was fun but also because i think that we need to make uh, room for more of uh, these uh, rulers. We have two here, third one here. Yeah, all of them have alien rulers. 
And unless one of them escapes, I would be strongly advocating for actually killing all of them. Prime team can always do that. I think we were lightly wounded, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just double check. No one was tired, right? It also keeps the whole Avatar project very much under control. Not that I'm terribly afraid of it, but... Oh yeah, well, never mind. Tired 11 days. Sometimes it's better in XCOM to be wounded instead of tired. Which is crazy if you think about it. Lots of people have recovered from their wounds. Bond building. Which you can do when you're tired. So might as well wait until the bond training is gone, uh, done. And then not only do we have rank 3 bonds on all of them. We can also finally go to the next location. To one of uh, these facilities oh that was so much overdue so long overdue improved auto pistols templars <laughs> auto pistol weapon damage plus one they see i normally never skip any upgrades but here's the deal uh, he really shouldn't be using his auto pistol uh, I'm not going to spend 10 days uh, with it. No, 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 no. I'm somewhat intrigued uh, with the sisters, so let's start with that. Uh, we have a couple of other cool items here. The bio items so far, I appreciate them. Am I missing something? Breakthrough... I think we're in, we're using that first because that gives us uh, intel, which then gives us alloys and delirium to upgrade our weapons because we don't have these materials yet and hence we need to buy them from the black market. So three days of research gone down the drain in order to do that. We completed our research in That's 111 intel. Very good. I await your now we can do something else and start with the autopsy. Finally, guys, it only took 56 episodes to get to the new research. Could have been, could have been an idea for one of the next runs uh, to limit the amount of enemies, but only allow uh, ballistic weapons and some other uh, stuff. Uh, so that I'm automatically forced to research that. 100 intel for a colonel. That's also pretty good. But it's a random character. And that really doesn't create the same connection in this run. Compared to leveling you guys up. So... If possible, I would not do that. Superior autoloader is good. I like that. Uh, we still have 133 inch. The kernel is tasty. Should I just strengthen the ranks by one more? You know what? It's a meat grinder. Might as well do it. I promise you we're, they will not see a lot of action unless absolutely necessary. So we got Thumper here. Thumper looks like, hmm, I'm not a custom character. But he's a genius level. Oh my gosh. It's actually a really good that's actually a really good character. Uh, we're definitely going to go with Heavy Ordnance as well. Please don't tell me that that guy 
also has really good abilities. That would be such a shame. You're recruiting randomly from the black market like the super colonel in month uh, 11 or 12. And then he's just straight up better than your own soldiers. Well, luckily at least that didn't completely invalidate uh, everything. So extra grenade, yes please. Blast padding, yes please. Could go for volatile mix. Run and gun is also good. I think run and gun is actually quite good. It's a good ability. Might as well take it. Really decent soldier. I'm glad that I spent uh, the monies on him. Hello, Commander. Good, let's build items. We wanted weapon upgrades. Pl uh, plasma rifle upgrade. 50 Alarium Crystals. Holy shit, that will cost all of our Alarium. Well, great. One moment you can upgrade everything, the next moment you can no longer upgrade anything. Well, fantastic. I think uh, the Reaper upgrade would make sense, a lot of sense actually. But we don't have the Alloys at the moment. This year would be fun to use the bolt caster and I don't know what that plasma scimitar is might as well might as well use it so I want to upgrade that turret as well and the only thing that's missing is alloys <laughs> And we got the MK2 turrets, so they are available. Ah, sucks. Really was hoping we would get uh, a bit more alloys. Might as well get one ultrasonic lure. The next time that the losses are here without the headshot mod that item is really good don't sleep on the ultrasonic lure it's a good item all right we got snipers upgraded that's fantastic that means our snipers are actually doing some decent damage finally with their weapon still waiting for plasma rife uh, plasma weapon breakthroughs in the meantime, our Psy operatives continuing their training. It is crazy how long it takes until they are done with their training. Good, we got a new we got a new recruit for the low level uh, team. And I think the next one, Shattered Realm, is uh, coming in this time as a ranger. Welcome to the team, my friend. Hexer. It's uh, the low level variant of what we just bought for a hundred intel. But I think one way of having fun for a few more uh, for a few more missions, whilst we're trying to rumble everybody out is to actually use sergeants and few lower ranking members and you don't have all of the hardcore skills available by now it seems that i can at least stabilize but it doesn't mean that we win because uh number one arbor gate still exists it's one of the side goals wait a second i want to see what that is Frost scale vest. Okay. That sounds at least super awesome. Good. Biotrooper autopsy.
We only got one core. Don't want to waste that. Engineering. What does that frost scale do? Armor. Items. Okay, not sure why Frost Scale Vest is a weapon, but okay. Frost Scale Vest is made from Frost a Viper Scales and grants immunity to Viper Poison as well as to Frost. Well, Frost is a shit immunity. Uh, very few enemies are using that. And it specifically only calls out Viper Poison. Well, I'm going to instead build that. I'm ignoring the fact that it was under the wrong category. And we're going to take a look at the stats. Maybe it is a fantastic item. Okay, so hmm, help me out here. Why does it say four to six points of damage? Snap freeze can be used in a fort high radius around the West Vera. Exploding deals frost damage to the area, and the wearer is immune. Also increases the soldier's health by two. Oh, I see. That's why it was a weapon. Okay, it's actually a utility item, which you can use in order to charge into the enemy. And then in and around you, there will be kind of a snap freeze for four to six points of damage, shredding. Hmm. Not sure how to use that yet, but I'm sure one of the low, char uh, low level characters will find out because that's an item which will not find its way in, in the high level group. And or high rank group rather and hence I'm very content in passing that on can we build more of these no uh, it's a unique item if you were to fight against a lot of frost enemies the frost resistance would be absolutely fantastic but given as it is it's pretty meh Okay, what are we dealing with? Um, so side trips, feral hive. That's already bad because it means a lot of uh, a lot of chrysalids. Be on high alert, and then psionic squads also. Venator, elite specter, sectored, arm, psi viper. Okay, too many enemies. Brood chrysalid, brood mother. And an unknown enemy. The unknown enemy might be something bigger. So there is a normal codex. We're taking our Skulljack with us so that we can progress the main storyline. And a lot of chrysalids, really. What are we fighting for? Potentially, potentially quite a few um, inter uh, Ilariums and Alloys. So we could definitely use that. Now let's let's get there. And we're going to see what the chrysalids have uh, to tell us. Uh, we potentially need to find ways of immunizing ourselves against chrysalid poison. You know, by the way, what makes absolutely immune against chrysalid poison? A lot of thumbs up. I'm just pointing that out. So if you want an immune against chrysalide, uh, chrysalide poison video, then the right uh, way of doing that is hit the thumbs up button and see you in two days. All right, guys, have a good one and see you soon. Bye bye.